Hello everyone, my name is Mitz, and we're back a big set of Captain Epic Core. Now before we start, I have actually been going through this, like, these statements one by one to see if, like, thinking of, like, how something could be a contradiction. And, like, I think I had a... I have, like, you know, something down, because I don't want to repeat of, like, me just floundering around, like, crazy. I even looked up a walkthrough to make sure I was right. And I... Th and, yeah, my whole thing is right, but I'm, uh, since, you know, that's me saying it between edits, and I'm, uh... Take that with a grain of salt, because I can't prove it, can I? Because it's only coming from my brain, huh? <laughs> So the big thing about Emma, uh, why this dagger is not gonna be the murder weapon, is quite simply is um something revolving around uh, this um report dude. But I don't know, I can't read. I wonder, can you please read it for me? What it says, Mr. Smith? I have a big problem with that statement. Brisbane, I'd like to ask you a question, if you don't mind. What? This is a little dagger. Your case pretty much rests on this being the true murder weapon, right? I'm just wondering why it rests on it, since it just seems like you found us at the last minute, and now... I... what's... Ow. You want to find, you want to find something more clear-cut than just... Yeah. The knife doesn't have Snow's prints on it. You want to find something else to prove Snow's guilty for some reason. At last you begin to realize, it's not like it was... complicated? Yes, the prosecution's case rests on the stiletto being the object that took the victim's life. Thank you for reiterating! Now shut up! Problem? Yes. As I said, a big problem. I'd like to take, like you to take a closer look at the stiletto for a moment. Which part of the oh, which part of the stiletto are we supposed to be looking at, Mr. Wright? The blade, of course, Your Honor. Oh, you're going with that part. I was actually thinking of, like, how the autopsy goes. I guess the... What about the autopsy? <gasps> oh! That part. Oh. I was going with the fact that I'm, uh, the autopsy clearly states that I'm, uh, a knife was used, not a sword. Are you going with the widening? Oh. Notice how long and thin it is. There's no change in width or any sort of ser serrated edge in sight. And I'd like you to just take a look at page 2 of the autopsy report. Weapon, a knife. What's this? It reads that there was a small widening of the wound. Yes, and the autopsy report doesn't say it was a knife as well, so... Ser serrations, too. I haven't heard that word. I don't think I've ever heard that word before. Exactly, Your Honor. The shape of the wound matches the knife found on the table. The settler's blade is too thin to have made that widening the entry wound. You fool! You thought you caught me out for a second, didn't you? The killer could have wrenched the stiletto around, opening the wound. Why would they do that? What would be the purpose of doing that? Yeah. A direct penetration in the heart isn't enough to cause instant death? Oh, um, gah! <laughs> yeah, I'm lost for words, mate. Let's nice going. I just say that I'm completely increasingly skeptical about your so-called detective evidence. Those blood test results have better come back positive, or else. Do you the cross-examination? Oh, there's more than one? Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Okay, so there's something else here, and if I can't figure it out, I'll just cut ahead from here. But, hmm. <clears throat> okay, so... It might be the middleware weapon. Let's just see. Okay, let's find this office in his desk, and the one on the rack. Okay, let's see. Okay, everything that's outside this crime should be left disregarded. There's a tape that's supposed to go with a... Patrick 19 Satchet. Satchel. Baggy Waggy. Fox Monster. Okay. Number 10, 207. Separate the heart. Knife. Enter the victim's chest sideways. Small winding of wounds. Just the chest was the chest was the entry point of knife. Let's mm. tape. It's this cop. Uh -huh. It just shows like someone wanted to poison him. Or when Docs himself brought into the interrogation, bears the fingerprints of Volper and Docs. Empty Satchet. Patrick 19. Nice came back on and says the body to paint with me in the of the room before the murder. I the person immediately. Under analysis for blood. Found Snoop's office. That's it? Okay. We just need to wait for the blood results to prove that a stiletto was used that night. First of all, Snoop's prints are all over it, namely the handle. I think I got it. Has anything to say? You know, it doesn't tippy tip my tongue, but I'm, uh... Can we prove, like, can we show off the knife to, you know, because 
Why is Volper's goddamn prints on this knife? Okay, why not? I guess you're truly trying to prove that's not the dagger itself. Well, I guess that makes sense, actually. I don't fault you here. Penalized. Pen and a T. On track. Dita Decoration says, Bob, I've seen it there myself. Daggers and Dita Decoration says, Bob, I've seen it there myself. It might have been the real murder weapon. Since prints are all over it, namely the handle. Is there any fingerprints on the mug itself? Uh, just to be sure. Objection! Nope. <laughs> Let's see. Nope. Okay. Just to be sure. Okay, so I, I definitely like knew I was going to go around in circles, but... Looking at how the walkthrough goes, I could definitely see what I was missing, although it was very presumptuous. It was implying it, instead of, you know, outright saying it. As the prosecution said, it might have been the weapon. So the thing is, prints are all over it. It's actually this statement it was found in Snow's office in his desk, not in the one on her rack. If, like, Snow had the, the dagger on his, in his hands to kill him, like, it wouldn't make too much sense because, like, if he, like, Snow, like, ran all the way back to his office with the sword just, you know, to probably put it back, but left on his desk? That contradicts with his testimony? And if, Bizbane, I swear to God, if you say that, you know, I'm, uh, <laughs> that he could've just been lying, was his ass the witness then? Ah. Uh, I definitely want to figure this out on my own. To dismiss, that's a glaring contradiction in what you just said. Hmm, I highly doubt that. Uh, well, I, uh, yeah. Are you saying that the stiletto was placed on the table by Detective Snow himself? Obviously, since it was removed from the rack, it's safe to say that it was used. That didn't happen, Detective. There's been, didn't your witness, Snow's arresting officer, catch a Snow as soon as he emerged from the interview room when the crime happened? That's exactly what she said. What's the point of- Oh my god. Looks like Brisbane's caught on. You're so fixated on this. Count of what? E X P L A I N. I just know himself stated this for the record. After the lights came back on and I saw the body, panic took me and I ran out of the room to report the murder. I was arrested immediately. And then, as you know, a police officer arrested Snow as soon as he emerged. Wait a minute. I think I'm beginning to understand what you're getting at, Mr. Wright. If Mr. Snow had actually used the slow to commit the murder, then how did it end up back in his office if we had no time to go there himself? Why, of course. If he was returned to sight by the witness, he had no time to return to, to return to Dagger back to his office. <sighs> I'm assuming the prison is, like, you know, completely separate from, you know, the police station, so I'm, uh, have fun with that. And I'm sure you're aware, the Soto was found in Snow's office, not the crime scene. So he couldn't have left it in the room. Meaning that the Stiletto has no connection to this murder whatsoever. But I... That's impossible! Excellent, mate. That's the way to do it. Mr. Rizbrain, did your witness indeed report the same thing? Yes. Yes, she did. Ah, oh, good old Maggie. She saw what happened and arrested Snow as soon as he stepped out. You hear me, Snowball? The witness caught you and red-handed. Well, tell for a fact that, you know... She actually said something... She actually saw something instead of this roundabout way. She didn't see anything, did she? That's why you're fixing on this, because... Because there's nothing definitive. <sighs> uh, excuse me, Your Honor? What is it, Bailiff? What is the session? I have some lab results for the prosecution, sir. Is this where we got to come to light? Aha! The Coupe de Grasse has arrived! Come on, boy! Hand over the document already! Those must be the results of the blood test conducted in the stiletto. Any ambiguity of it being involved with the crime will now be cleared. But will it be for the better? If there's blood in it, then I'm, uh... If the victim's blood, then... How the fuck does that work? Oh. I don't know what we do, then. 
Hello, Mr. Brisbane. Did I still let hold the blood of the victim? I wish I could save this moment just a little longer. But the law comes first. I just wish I could say the look at Sobel's face when he sees. Well, was there any blood in the stiletto? No. 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 What? 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 Told you. <laughs> bailiff, what is this trash? Oh god. Stop taking it out on the bailiff, please. So the lab results say that the Sunno could proclaim to be the true murder weapon by the prosecution had nothing to do with this case whatsoever? Oh my god, it sounds like it was just a red herring. Uh huh. Well, I guess in this case it's a white herring because there's no goddamn blood in it. The Sunno was just a red herring all along. Oh my god. That, that can only mean. Your Honor, if I may? By all means, go ahead, Mr. Wright. Due to the fact that there was no blood found in the stiletto by the forensics, clearly it wasn't used by my client in murder paradox. Hmm, that seems to be the case. Oh, God. Judge, you can't just toss aside my decisive evidence like it's... Mr. Sprain, I was speaking. <laughs> the fence is correct. The stiletto couldn't have been connected to this crime at all. This was really seen fit to waste our time with desperate dis distractions. I felt the prosecution for such unacceptable behavior. Wow. I did. Letters are now in favor of the defense. That couldn't have gone any better, mate. So through the desperate bluff and you've almost... Oh, here we go. <laughs> no words. I'm not finished yet wrong. I mean, my name is right, and, like, I've, I've been right, you know, for two entire cases, though. Should I have changed that moniker? So, turns out that my decisive evidence wasn't so decisive after all. You proved that what, you proved that what I thought was the murder weapon was just a piece of circumstantial garbage. What? You think for one second that you put Snowball in the clear? You'll rule the day you became a different attorney, my friend. Do I have to go over there and give him a slap? Please don't. Seeing as you still defended this trial, that's probably not a good idea. So what if the stiletto, stiletto had nothing to do with the crime? Snow was still the one who killed the victim, and I don't need evidence to prove that. We just we, we just have to believe in blind faith that he did it? Oh my gosh, we have to believe in the power of friendship! I know I like that trope, but not in this case, my god. Not while I still have my witness. And I'm expecting great things coming from her mouth. The witness who caught you red headed in the act. Mm. I don't see blood on him. Oh, yes. This so called detective witness of yours. Thank you for your testimony, Detective Smith. You may be set down now. Eh, sure thing, Your Honor. I'm gonna go back to my duck drawings. And Maggie Bird, come out here! Mr. Brisbane, do not interrupt me again. Looks like Brisbane is starting to lose his influence over the judge. Oh boy. The court summons the witness to the stand. Hi, Maggie. Will you tell this red-eyed loser over here that what you saw wasn't the case? Or if it is, then... If Snow is the killer, then, or like, if, like, if you did see something red hand in the... The Brisbane is just being a... An asshole. Trying to like, add another layer of ev like some evidence on top of the pile, like what? I don't understand. Payment occupation. Keep it short. The name's Maggie Bird, sir. I just recently rejoined the police force. Tone the cheeriness down, Miss Bird. I'm not in a good mood today. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Is there any way I can make it up to you? Fuck no. Continue. <laughs> when have you ever been in a good mood? When Volver wasn't, would, would just give me to jail then? <laughs> what a rude man you are. Do you want my testimony or not? So if that's what you've been specifically summoned for, what do you think? Alrighty then, sir. One testimony coming right up. <laughs> oh my god. This is the part I'm most worried about. Maggie claims to have seen Snow commit murder. I know she wouldn't lie about this. Yeah. I'm willing to bet it's just misunderstanding, though. Hmm. What I saw. I was patrolling at Block A of the prison that night on my own. Oh, yeah, this came to mind. I actually looked up, a, like, you know, someone going through, like, a 
playthrough walkthrough thing. The original music for this area was not Dual Destinies, it actually was, um, uh, what was it? The music for the third game. I feel like it's more appropriate here, because like I said, orchestration music here, you know, instead of the, you know, the other, like the Game Boy Advance game that took the DS. doesn't even matter what you, like, what, what you play the game on first, like, it seems like that music fits here better. <laughs> I was patrolling block A of the prison that I may own. While approaching the entrance of your rooms, I heard raised voices coming right from one of them. I ran over to investigate and found the door open slightly. I looked in and I saw the snow standing by the body. Okay, hold on, is there more? He then turned towards the door and ran for me. In such a panic, I managed to cuff him. I escorted him to the detention center. Okay, on first blush. There's nothing. Okay, maybe we repress things. There's actually something more than... I'll wait until then. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, but... Uh, I see. This is the defendant keen to be arrested? Try getting out that one, Snow. Or should I say, Mr. Wrong? I swear, I thought you were going to make a pun out of Snow's last name. I was like, I was just going to be waiting just ready here just to just to critique your own joking abilities and I'm just going hard on you because I, I, I'm very discriminatory against people making jokes. If you make, if you're against jokes or make terrible ones, I know I've been pretty harsh in that. Don't mind the fact I like all jokes. <laughs> <laughs> just the people who hate jokes, they're on my discriminatory list. Go away, you. <laughs> Mr. Wright, you may begin the cross-examination. Okay. I'll leave the moment of truth till the very end. I was patrolling a block of the prison that night on my own. All by yourself? Yes. So? Oh. Why don't you all be in pairs? I thought the officers had to patrol the prison in pairs. How come you were alone? Oh. Right. The truth is, Mr. Wright, that I was meant to do prison patrol with a partner, but we uh, had disagreement. We decided to split up? Oh boy, your employees or whoever's in charge is gonna be right fun time with me there. Really? What sort of disagreement? He was being a jerk, taunting me, saying I was too scared he can't control the prison at night. I'll show you, I said. I'll do it all by myself. Then he was a scaredy cat, huh? Well, you sure did. So you did your patrol alone just to prove to someone that you're not a scaredy cat? I'll bring I would bring something up right now, but I'm uh, I'm pretty sure the game's gonna just by the record of just me bringing things up and like the game just gonna bring it up too. Okay, I'll just wait. Something about prison block A. Let's go with that just to say I'm actually right. That's right, sir. Why why are you calling me scaredy cat too? I mean, do you like cats? Because we do, then yeah. But if you like dogs, then you're a scaredy dog. We'll be the we'll be the dog variation of scaredy cat. Eh. What? No, of course not. I find myself worrying about the level of maturity in the police department right now. Uh, airhead detective. Uh, incompetent detective. Well, sarcastic, I would say. More sarcastic. Uh, loyal but incompetent other, like, green, like, little green, we greenhorn wearing coat detective. Well, he's been on the force longer than anyone here, apparently. Well, we don't know anything about Red Mike's, you know, time here, so, man. And, uh, yeah, the son of the police officer we heard. Mike Meekins, uh... The joke's on him. Block A barely held any prisoners at all. <laughs> I knew it. That, I thought they were gonna bring it up. Oh yeah, there was no bringing Block A to the Chief's mass transfer all. No, except for Vulper and Maplethorpe. Still suspicious. Is that gonna come up in part two? So you're patrolling Block A alone? What happened next? While approaching the interview rooms, I heard raised voices coming from one of them. Hmm? Did you recognize any of the voices you heard? I remember hearing Detective Snow yelling something about lights. Did you hear any other voices? No, sir. I don't think I heard anybody else's voice. Huh. What does she mean by you yelling about lights? Have you forgotten already? The blackout, yeah. Forgotten what? Exactly! Don't you remember about the blackout? That was the most subtle joke you've ever made so far. Oh my god, I commend you on that. Oh, yeah, that completely my mind. What's that about? Blackout, I hear the defense whispering about? I, I thought you said earlier we hearing sound what it used to be. You were lying to us, Judge. According to my client, Your Honor, there was a blackout that hit during the inter interrogation. A, a blackout? Huh. 
Is that so? And this would justify what Miss Bird said about the defendant shooting about lights? I think this blackout might be a useful piece of information regarding the murder. So you heard the defendant's raised voice. What did you do next, Miss Bird? I ran over to investigate and found the door opened slightly. Hmm? Could you see into the room? Only a small portion of the room from where I was standing, sir. I can only see the side of the table the officers were stood at. What should I say? Officer. Could you tell us more about what you saw, Miss Bird? I guess I should. I looked in and I saw the touch of snow stood by the body. Moment of truth. If you didn't see anything else, then... Then there's nothing. What you're saying hinges on this, okay? If this doesn't work, literally there's nothing else. There's no evidence holding over snow. But because since Snow has been indicted in this case, we somehow have to prove someone else did the crime, like, you know, completely because, uh, Phoenix Wright gets lost. You saw what? There was a bloody- a body slumped over the table. And it's just Snow just seemed to be standing there, looking at it. I didn't realize looking at a body was so... <sighs> illegal. Keep it down. Oh, this isn't good. This isn't good at all. I need to press her for more from what she saw. There's so many questions losing through my thoughts right my mind right now. Like Phoenix, calm down and keep your thoughts. Let's take this one question at a time. What should I ask Maggie about what she saw? What's Snow doing? Anything else about Snow? Okay, we're just gonna go down these one by one. Could you describe what Detective Snow was doing in more detail? I'll try, sir. Let's see. For the most part, he seemed to be just standing there, looking at the body. Wow, so suspicious. That's I remember, my friend, Mr. Wright. Sorry. Uh-oh, not a sign up for my liking. Maybe I should ask a different question. Please use your testimony, Miss Bird. Hmm. Okay. Let's go back here and give it a good old once-over with a fine-tooth comb. Anything noticeable about Snow? Was there anything about us about Detective to Snow that you noticed? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, sir. Was there anything about its appearance that struck you as odd? Was he wearing any gloves, for instance? Okay, finally, we're getting this. Gloves? No, I don't believe he was wearing any gloves. Brisbane, you don't have a brain. I remember when I handcuffed him, he had nothing like that on his hands. There's nothing. There's absolutely fucking nothing. I just know he wasn't wearing gloves. Oh, wait a minute. That means... Runner! Think back to this knife for a moment, supposedly the murder weapon. Oh yes, clearly the murder weapon, since that still has nothing to do with a red herring. What about it, Mr. Wright? Miss Bird just stated that my client wasn't wearing gloves of any kind, and the only fingerprints on this knife are those of Volper and Perry Dodd, the victim. So unless, you know... <laughs> so unless, you know, Snow had gloves on, took them off in between the time, and like, you know... Or like... <laughs> no. Unless he hid in the room some, for some time, then, you know, walked out and immediately was arrested. And, you know, I'm pretty sure you would have no chance to hide this, the gloves then after, you know, you know, Miss Bird was escorting him to, you know, you know, to, like, interrogation about what happened again. Then, yeah, there was no gloves the scene. Unless Perry Docks had some. Meh. Meaning, that Justice Snow did not touch the knife at all. Defense may be onto something here. Alright, when's that objection coming, Brisbane? I can swear that took my tongue. If the Snow had meant to use a knife, then he most certainly would have used gloves. Just seeing as no more found in this person, or anywhere else in the room, please do trust my Miss Bird. Huh. You're not bringing anything up about this so far, Brisbane. Hmm. And the final question. Let's ask you that. Else you saw? Was there anything else in the room that you noticed? Uh, not really, sir. There was just a stone body. I think I stuck out his eye. Where's Volper? Just a touch of snow in the body. Oh, wait a minute. I think I just remember something else. The victim's body. There was something lodged in his back, sir. Can you describe what you saw in more detail? It had to be a knife. I didn't really see that well, but it was something long and thin. Long and thin? What? 
What's the only long and thin object in the court record, Mr. Wrong? That's right. The decorative stiletto. We just proved it was wrong. Order. But Mr. Brisbane, it has been proven that the stiletto had nothing to do with this case. Maybe. What's the defense's take on this object? It's not part of the case. You can't be serious, Brisbane. That stiletto is still a vital piece of evidence, so you can discredit its purpose entirely. We contradicted it three times in a row. Fuck off. So how about Mr. Wrong? Are you up to the task? It's impossible. The stiletto had no trace of the victim's blood on it. So what was this long, thin, odd object that Maggie saw lodged in its back? Maybe we have to... Oh, this is the thing we have to present, like, you know, what it really was. Well, if it's not the dagger, then it was the knife? Well, if there was a blackout, maybe she saw things weirdly? Maybe? Well, let's press all of it, then, like, afterwards I'll press the knife again to see if that works. What do you think the object was, Miss Bird? I hate to say it, but, sir, I had to agree with the prosecutor. That long, thin dagger looked an awful lot like what I saw. And of course, you couldn't see it very well at the time, but... But that can't be possible, but still, it had no trace of blood in it. Objection. That's unnecessary battering the witness! Stop it! What she thinks the object was doesn't matter. What does matter, however, is how you can disprove the stiletto being this long, thin object. And don't give me that same, duh, you know, blood in it excuse. I hate you. The person of that might be this object can't be completely discredited altogether. Oh, yes, apparently, also, I'm, uh. Oh, there's a possibility that I'm, uh, the killer decided to rub peroxide against the sword. And then we just proved that even though there's no, like, you know, there's no peroxide to scene or any mention of it so far in the entire case or game, or game series for that matter, yes, obviously Snow ruined all trace of blood, even by testing results. Obviously. Obviously. And Snow, in that matter, had the sword on an entire person, and when he was entirely locked up in the detention center, he somehow miraculously teleported that sword into his office this entire time! Ah! Yeah. Can you just hear the disdain in my voice? I bet you can. <laughs> I'm forced to agree with you on this one, Mr. Brisbane. A long, thin object exists. Not that the witness saw large than its back. Although this little has no blood on it, we can't yet disprove its value as evidence so we know for sure what this long, thin object was. There must be some way I can prove that this little wasn't the object. In the meantime, Miss Bird may continue to testify. Then Rain turns the door and Rain from me. Okay, let's press all of it and go back to that statement. Oh, that was not. Oh, I was wondering where the sound bite was. I was like, oh, please don't tell me it's glitched again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ran for you? Oh my god. Now, it's kind of exaggerating the things a bit, wouldn't you say? Says no. Control yourself. Only the fence may I question the witness. I'm sorry for wording it like that, sir. Just that the prosecution told me to say. Quiet! Oh my god. God! Has been told her to say that Snow ran for her? That's desperate. Uh, let's bring this back. Okay. Uh, let me phrase what I said. He ran towards the door, but didn't seem to notice me. Yeah, I think that's better. I stepped back as he burst the door, then... In a state of panic, I managed to cuff him, then export him to the detention center. Mm. Doesn't seem like you or Snow's light or anything. His testimony lines up with what you're saying as well. You arrested my client then and there, all by yourself? Salute. That's right. Do you resist at all? Resist? When face to face with Officer Maggie Bird? Of course he didn't. It wasn't quite as dramatic as that. I didn't resist because I had no reason to. The only guilty person tries to resist arrest. I can't help but notice that there are too many vague statements in the testimony. Be a good place to start right now, and then see what we learn as a result. Well, we press everything, okay? Hmm. And raise forces. Okay, so something long and thin. Let's see what happens. If we just press the knife. I guess that's the only other weapon in the entire courtroom. Unless you're saying that the mug was somehow, you know, the murder weapon. 
because, like, do you see, like, the mug is not broken, so we can't use coffee shards, or anything like that. Well, this is the, 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 the poison bag actually gave up. I was gonna say paper cut, but no, since it's made of plastic, a plastic cut. That sounds ridiculous. Ugh. Oh, wow. No, it's that simple. I wouldn't get too attached to that stiletto if I were you, Brisbane. I mean, it's like a stiletto shoe or something. Like Let me ask you a question, Phoenix Blight. Oh, wow. The callback. Uh -huh. <laughs> Blight Bridge. Yeah. Blight. Clever. Blind as earth. Okay. If it's still it's a stiletto such a red herring, what did Officer Bird see in his back? Well, let me explain, my dear fellow friend, foe, amigo, brother, pal. <laughs> Why this, of course. That knife? It reminds you of what Officer Bird described the object as. Can it remind a witness? Uh, I said that I was something long and thin, sir. Right. Now, which part of the long and thin do you not understand? You are the one who doesn't understand, Brisbane. What? You've forgotten about something else. There's something in the record that proves that this knife is what Miss Bird saw. Hmm. Something else in the court record that proves it was a knife? Oh, let's see. Stab into the heart. Enter the victim's chest sideways, trying to enter the heart before exiting through the vat. Small winding the wounds, just the knife with the entry point of knife. Is this it? Let's take a look at the autopsy report. On page two, it states that the knife entered the victim's chest sideways. Like, mm. Now, what did the victim do after he was stabbed? Mm. Did he fall forwards with the table? Yeah, he was slumped. Oh, it wedged. It, whoever stabbed him, like, it stabbed into his gut, then he fell forwards, and the blade went fully into his body. Oh, boy. Right, now try and visualize this scenario. Oh boy. The body was face down, the knife's blade sticking out of his back, sideways. Wait a moment, the knife's blade entered sideways, and the witness saw the body from the side. Ooh. Precisely. Miss Bird, it was this knife that you saw on the witness's back. <gasps> I, I see, it all makes sense now. Observing the situation from the side, <gasps> from a different perspective, wouldn't you say? The knife would have appeared to be thin. Exactly, Your Honor. And what's more, the victim fell forwards, the knife was driven further into his body by the table. I mean that more of the blade was visible protruding from his back, which easily could have been proved mistaken for this stiletto. I see. Other than having an object lodged into the victim's back, it was an object sticking out of the victim's back. Ah, oh, ingenious. Mr. Brisbane, I suggest that you stop relying on the stiletto as valuable evidence. So far, you've shown not one shred of proof the defendant uses to commit the crime. So I have it, Your Honor. Miss Bird, I have a question for you if you don't want my answering it. Of course not, Your Honor. Fire away! What you've told us so far appears to make sense. But there's just one thing that strikes me as odd. What's wrong? It has also been brought to our attention by the defendant that there was a blackout that night. How are you at all able to see what you were describing with the building's pitch black? Oh. Oh. Okay. I would just continue on like right now, but for the time being, I think we'll leave off here. Uh, if there was a black that night, how did you see? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I remember now. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, I just remembered it. Okay, but for those leaving you in the dark, because uh, I like doing that apparently, like that's what this whole series is about, if, that, if it hasn't become clear or not, I guess we'll just leave it off here. And we'll find out what it is next time. For those who are left in the dark, would you say, uh, okay. So, for a fun time watching as I am playing this, I'll be seeing you next time, the time may be, and I'll hope that you have a fantastic day.